Joining me now is Bob Cusack, editor-in-chief of The Hill. Bob, let's start with Russia. Rex Tillerson yesterday said that the two foremost owners of nuclear weapons can't have this sort of relationship. Mm -hmm. So how do the U.S. and Russia resolve at least some of their differences? Well, Russia's going to have to make a decision. Are they going to be aligned with uh, Syria and Iran, uh, or do they want to have good relations uh, with the United States? Remember, the, the Obama administration tried to reset with Russia. It did not work. So, you know, the bromance between President Trump and, and Putin appears to, be, appears to be over. There's no doubt a, a, about it. It's success or failure, then, when you look at the visit that Rex Tillerson paid to Moscow yesterday. I, it, maybe it's too easy to say it black and white, success or failure. How much of it was a success? How much of it was a failure? Well, Tillerson had a message to deliver, and he said he was going to be tough uh, with the Russians, and he was. So I think that this is the, the, the first step uh, of trying to uh, rattle Russia. Now, Russia's not easily rattled. So I, it's clearly they got... Uh, Tillerson didn't get any concessions, it, it seems, from the Russians. Uh, but I think this is a long-term project uh, where he's going to continue to work on them. But, but at the press conference and in public comments, uh, he didn't sugarcoat it. He was pretty tough on them. Yeah, you, and I'm thinking about the first, what you were saying, the bromance is over, and now with Tillerson and the message that he delivered, I guess at this point, can things get lower? They were called a low point yesterday. Can it get lower in relations? Well, I, I think it depends on what happens in Syria. As you know, there, there are Russians, uh, a lot of Russians in Syria, and if there were some type of conflict uh, between the U.S. and maybe inadvertent uh, bombing of Russia. Now, before we uh, attacked, uh, when President Trump attacked uh, Syria, they did give Russia a heads up. So I think that's the only way it probably could get worse right now is if there's some type of military accident or conflict that, that actually triggers uh, talk of, of uh, more tension between Russia and the United States. Well, one thing we saw yesterday, President Trump reversed course actually on several things, one of them being NATO calling it no longer obsolete, even though previously he said it was. He also doesn't want to label China as a currency manipulator. And this, again, was a reversal on a campaign stance, even words that we heard from him recently. What do these foreign policy changes signal to you? Uh, well, certainly he's got to worry about angering his base. Uh, these are big issues to his base. And, and whatever President Trump does, I mean, he has the support of about 30 percent uh, of of the electorate. And this is going against some of the things that he did run on. So I think he's got to be very careful. At the same time, his legislative accomplishments uh, have been next to nothing. Uh, he got Gorsuch through. That's a big win on the Supreme Court and, and it ruined some Obama era regulations. But health care, nowhere. Tax reform, still to be determined. Transportation. So I think some of these stances the establishment likes uh, in Washington um, but I think they're geared toward getting things done. Yeah, getting things done, but you sort of touched on this. Is he now sort of at risk of ruining his base and, and running away from them? Yes, yes. Uh, I, I think that's, that is a big factor that the White House has to take into account. However, uh, you know, we're approaching 100 days at the end of this month, and he doesn't have many victories. So I think that, you know, and remember, President Trump is not an ideologue. He wants to get a deal. So he's changed his positions on a number of things, but he does have to watch it if his base turns against him. Uh, then his, his, really, his poll numbers could, could plummet even further. One of the things the base has to be happy seeing right now is he's reportedly, the administration reportedly, speeding up the hiring of border agents, uh, deportation cases as well. Is immigration the one promise that he appears to be sticking to? Yes, I think so. And he's not backing off on, on building the, the wall along the U.S.-Mexico border. Um, but at the same time, congressional Republicans don't know how they're going to get the money uh, to pay for that wall uh, through Congress. It's not going to be in this appropriations bill uh, at the end of this month that's going to avert, I think they will avert a government shutdown. But if they try to put wall funding in there, Democrats are going to balk and then maybe you do see uh, some type of shutdown. You mentioned Democrats. When it comes to health care right now, President Trump is threatening to withhold payments to insurers to get the Democrats to the negotiating table. What's the risk there? And then where do we stand on health care, which seemed dead and now seems not so dead? Uh, Dana, that's a great question. I, you know, I think that President Trump is trying to trying to play some games here uh, in at the negotiation table, but I don't think that that's going to make Democrats come to the table. But he faces a very difficult choice whether to keep up these payments, which are also a subject of a lawsuit brought by Republicans, and Republicans won that lawsuit against Obama. So whether he, if he funds these, if he continues to to dish out the payments uh, for Obamacare, is going to get criticized by the right, and if he doesn't, uh, Democrats are going to accuse him of torpedoing torpedo 
torpedoing uh, Obamacare. I think it's kind of a no-win situation. Democrats are not going to come to the table on Obamacare. That's the bottom line. You mentioned that 100-day mark, and it's just over two weeks away right now. I suppose it depends which side of the table you come from. But looking back right now as we approach that milestone, where do things appear to be in regards to the first 100 days of this Trump administration? Legislatively, they're really nowhere. Um, he's got to get some big win, and that's why they're talking about going back to health care. Now, to be fair, uh, Speaker Ryan and uh, Mitch McConnell, the majority leader in the Senate, have said, don't judge us on 100 days. These are big, heavy lifts. Judge us at the 200-day mark. So uh, I, I don't think they're going to have a lot of, uh, certainly, accomplishments at 100 days. The question is, will they have a big win by we 200 days? Bob Cusack with a lot of information for us to take in. Bob, thank you. Thank you.